Hello and welcome back to Big Discussions. My name is Dr. Anwar Yusuf Dunbar. I am the uh, owner of this channel uh, and the founder of the Big Words blog site. The information from my blog and all my social media are on the banner for this channel. Please like, share, and uh, subscribe. Uh, today is May 25th, 2019. So tomorrow, actually, Monday's Memorial Day. In any case, I didn't think I'd be making a video again this quickly. I think this is a record for me now, and I want to get in and out uh, pretty pretty quickly. So, as you can tell from the title, this is related once again to uh, Robert uh, uh, F. Smith's uh, gift to the uh, 2019 graduating class of Morehouse College. So he agreed to pay off the student loans for those graduates, uh, basically freeing them up to do numerous things in life, save, invest, uh, to save, invest, build, and also to pot potentially give back to uh, the school. So as often does on YouTube, when you watch one thing, the algorithm brings up something else related. And so one of my favorite YouTube content creators is uh, Aaron Clary, Captain uh, Capitalism, as he, as he goes by. And he made a reaction video to, to that. And when I watched it, I thought that the message was worth echoing. So I'm going to echo what Aaron Clary said. So Aaron Clary actually applauded uh, what Mr. Smith did. Um, and I still applaud what Mr. Smith did. Um, but what we know in life is that uh, two things, two facts can coexist at the same time and still be true. One doesn't necessarily have to cancel out the other. Oh, by the way, who is this video for? This is for everybody. So while we're talking about a historically black college, this pretty much goes across the board for any student and family looking to go to college to get a four-year degree or maybe a master's, a PhD, an MD, a law degree, or whatever. So two things, two pieces of information and two facts can coexist and not cancel out the other. So while it's a good thing that Mr. Smith agreed to pay off the student loans for these 2019 Morehouse graduates, what's also true is that $100,000 is a lot of money to pay for a bachelor's degree. So in my video yesterday, I quoted what the uh, annual tuition for Morehouse was for 2016, 2017, I believe that was the right year, and it was about $27,000. So you multiply that times four, and assuming a student had to do that, pay that amount for four years, that's over $100,000 to pay back. So, you know, I don't have children at this point, uh, but but I can think back to when I was, uh, you know, looking to go to college. Uh, my mother did bring up the cost. Um, and as a teen, as a, a late teen, and in your early 20s, you don't quite appreciate what it means to have to pay back that kind of money. Okay, so I think that I went to Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte, North Carolina, JCSU, which is another HBCU. Um, and I think at the time, our tuition was about 8000 a year. Don't quote me on that, but I know it was significantly less than what the kids are paying now. And, you know, also, by the way, 
in terms of HBCUs, uh, JCSU was not my first choice. Uh, a few people know that. I actually, uh, you know, wanted to go to, I applied to Morgan State, I applied to uh, Virginia Union, and I applied to Hampton, or at least, I at least entertained thoughts of going to Hampton. And my mother looked at the two Virginia schools and said, you know, look, these just cost too much money. Okay, so that's something that she, you know, flagged and rescued me from. I was just looking at the name and the tradition. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about HBCUs, that's one of the things that, you know, comes up when you're thinking about these schools is the name and the tradition and the history. Um, but you also have to consider the cost. How much is it going to cost on the back end to uh, pay off your education if you don't, if your parents haven't already saved for it, and if you don't have enough uh, grants and scholarships to, uh, you know, get the education and not have to pay anything back. It's worth noting and, and worth repeating that once again, I went to a state school first where I think I had significant uh, financial aid, but for my first two years, and that's New York State, but for my first two years at Johnson C. Smith University, I was, I was an out-of-state student at a private school and we relied on the Parent PLUS loan. which my mother uh, basically borrowed so that I could, she borrowed that money so that I could go because she was the one responsible. And now the last two years of my undergraduate education, once again, I was doing so well academically that I qualified for uh, a fellowship that paid my tuition and gave me a stipend so I didn't have to work. So those, those, those last two years were paid for. In terms of getting my PhD, I was in a STEM. So the way that the STEMs work, at least in the biomedical sciences, when your advisor has a grant, or yeah, if your advisor has a grant, they will typically cover most of your expenses. Um, and so my graduate advisor at the University of Michigan covered me for maybe the first four years, and then once again, I applied for a minority fellowship and that covered the remainder of my uh, doctoral studies. Now going back to uh, my mother and the Parent PLUS loan, I didn't f realize until I started my federal career that my mother was still paying that off. So when I started my federal career, um, you know, to make a long story short, I found out that my mother still had to pay back. She was still on the hook for $12,000. And, you know, I realized I didn't think that was fair. I didn't think that was right. I thought that I was, I was responsible for that money. So I uh, dug in and helped her pay that bill off because I didn't think it was right for her to be paying for my uh, education uh, while she was you know trying to take care of her things so we paid that off um, I was fortunate that my mother did that um, and, and not every parent will do that uh, you know some parents my um, I have an aunt and a cousin and I have a, my cousin wanted to go to Claflin which is another HBCU but my aunt was gonna have to borrow to pay for that and my aunt wasn't willing to do that so my cousin didn't go to Claflin which for my aunt it was in a way smart some parents feel that you should do whatever you can for your for your child's education and some parents are a little more realistic and say well you know what? I'm only gonna be able to do so much because if things don't work out which sometimes things don't I'm gonna be on the hook for uh, this loan. And so my cousin, um, my, my aunt wouldn't uh, take out the loan in her name for my cousin to go to Claflin. 
So, you know, depending on your life, it's, you know, things, any slew of things can happen. I think, you know, one of the things Aaron talked about, and I'm going to leave Aaron's video in the description box. One of the things he mentioned was that I think at least one of the Morehouse students who went on 60 Minutes or one of those shows said that his family, they, uh, they leveraged everything, um, or they leveraged quite a bit of their own assets, their homes and some other things. I didn't watch... I didn't watch the video, so I don't know for sure, but they put themselves um, basically on the line so he could go to Morehouse. And I don't want to make it sound that way, but that's basically what happened. So if he didn't finish for whatever reason, uh, they were going to potentially lose their stuff. And if he uh, you know, did not pay those loans back, they were going to be um, liable for those loans. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video, which is that, as in most cases, there's another story here that people aren't talking about. And that's that you need to consider how much is reasonable to pay for your college education. Parents and students need to think about this on the front end. Also, it's important to think about does the economy require the job you're going to school for? And I think uh, another content creator named The Angry Man, um, who I enjoy watching, I think he said that Mr. Smith pointed this out at well at some point, that we oftentimes go to school to major in things that we want to major in, but it's actually the economy that dictates what skills and jobs are needed. And I want to shout out my mentor because he was the first one who um, actually pointed that out to me. That's something to think about. Will there be a job waiting for you when you finish your education? It's the economy that dictates that, not us. Now, the other question is why I'm going to close with this is why the tuition why is the tuition at these schools so expensive um, I don't know enough about higher education to be able to say why but that's something that I think needs to be looked at and I think that's something that needs to be fixed in all this because you know you, you could defeat the purpose of going to get that education in the first place so I had something else on my mind that I was going to say, but I just lost it. Let me see. Well, it's not coming back. So with that, I'm going to conclude this video. Please like the video. Please uh, subscribe to my channel. Please share the video, especially if you have someone in your circle who's thinking about going to uh, pursue a college degree to uh, start a white collar career. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.